Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Leopard Guns 5110. Thanks for joining us. Today I want to talk about why I don't like or hate uh, myths about lever actions. Mainly because they're not true. Okay, we're going to go over several of them. One of them is the pointy bullet thing. Everybody knows lever actions can't shoot pointy bullets. This is a 300 Winchester short mag. Stuff like the 30 6 and all those calibers. Everybody knows lever actions can't shoot them. The only thing is that hasn't been true for over 100 years. And so, because the 1895 Winchester come out in, in uh, 30 6 and 303 and 303 and uh, even the 405. Let's look at one of those 405 cartridges. Now this is... Get this where you can see the box here. 405. Let's see if you can see it. Get it up here. Alright. This right here is the cartridge. You should be able to see that. That is a pointy bullet. This here is why the... 1895 could use pointed bullets because it has a box magazine and this is how you load it you kind of stick the rimmed cartridges you stick them in there you slide it down you slide it up you push it down you slide it over kind of like that anyhow that's that's how they you know but that was in 1895 that you could use pointed bullets so that's been over 100 years and that kind of gives you an idea And, okay, the 405, you know, obviously come out at the turn of the century. But the 1895 Winchester come out in a lot of pointy bullet cartridges. Now, let's also don't forget about the Savage 99, which come out for pointy bullets. And then, after the Winchester Model 71, which we have one right here. Now, this did not come out for pointy bullets. We have one of those cartridges right here. Let me show it to you. And it, when it come out, this cartridge here matched the velocities of the 30-06 with a 200 grain bullet. Uh, a very potent cartridge made for this right here, little rifle right here. Very handy gun. Very uh, easy to get to the shoulder. So this cartridge come out for this gun here. And this right here is a very potent gun, good for big game, you know, decent range. You can shoot two shots or more a second with this gun, which is another myth I heard that lever actions, you got to lower them down every time in between shots, which is a figment of somebody's imagination. But anyhow, I mean, I guess some people do. You see some people, they lower it down like this. And then they run their bolt like that on a bolt action, which is totally weird. But anyhow, so let's get on. Okay, after the getting back where I was at, the Model 71, after it uh, went out of production, they started the Model 88. Anyhow, what, what, I'm, what I'm getting at is that's never been a real thing, not being able to shoot pointy bullets. Yes in certain guns but the same goes for bolt actions like when bolt actions first come out you had a lot of different bolt actions that only come with tubular magazines and was only good for uh regular flat nose bullets and another thing that most people don't know is the first splitzer bullets come out in a tubular magazine they were kind of odd shaped bullets let me see if i can show you kind of how they looked they were very tapered bullets so that this bullet behind it would not poke it in the primer. It would be below the primer. And uh, I'm going to leave descriptions down below on that particular gun. It was a French made gun. Uh, let me see if I can even get the name. If I'm not mistaken, that was uh, 1887 or 1886 uh, French Lavelle. And it come with a tubular magazine and it shot spiral or splitzer bullets. It's the one that they invented the bullets for. 
And so that's kind of not true how most people say tubular magazine is only on uh, lever actions because it never was the case. Obviously shotguns and multiple other guns, 22, 22 bolt actions, a lot of them come with tubular magazines. So that's another myth that we bust. It's not true. So right here is a tubular magazine. on a bolt action 22 see bolt action now this gun is not really functional and I never never use it it's not loaded and the reason is is because if you set the safety and say you're squirrel hunting you pull the trigger safety is on so you pop the safety off the gun will go boom it's typical thing that a lot of bolt actions have a problem with is their striker fired so if you pull the trigger with the safety on and you pop the safety off something's not got a little dirt in there or whatever a lot of times they'll fire so um this gun will do that this is a remington and it's a model uh what is it it's a model i think it's a model 34 yeah model 34 Another one of the myths going around is that lever actions come in medium power cartridges, kind of like 44 Magnum, uh, 3030, uh, 4570, stuff like that. And that's not altogether true either, although this is a really beautiful 92 Rossi, a very beautiful specimen. Very handy, easy to get to the shoulder. And it's a very handy gun. And this gun is capable, of, I mean, you know, the Rossi come out and the poor old, the 454 Casul, which we all know is a 60,000 plus PSI, in other words, pressure, pounds per square inch gun. So, I mean, 60,000, that's a lot. That's a lot. There's bolt actions that won't take 60,000 PSI, though blow apart, especially a lot of those old military bolt axes. And when I say a lot, I mean millions, millions, not hundreds, millions. Because you know, they out of the, the, um, Le, the LaBelle, there, there was two or three million of those made, you know, and they, they're not high pressure guns. And then let's see what else we got right here, busting this myth. This is a 4590 cartridge. It was a fairly potent cartridge in its day, but in today's world, this is a very potent cartridge. And then the 405, like what we talked about earlier, this was, you know, pretty close to 3,000 foot pounds of energy gun. 3,200, if I'm not mistaken, which is pretty potent back in the day. That's more than a 30 6 by the way. Especially the older 30 sixes. Okay, so if we go on back a few years further back, we do have some fairly what we might call today standard weak actions. Like this in here is the 5095 with the 76 Winchester, which we have a video we're going to put the thing about right here so you can look at that video. So the uh, 1876 shot these. 5095 cartridges, which are not super powerful, but has a big hole. And the gun was capable enough that they doubled the bullets on it, which uh, is 350 grain bullet, if I'm not mistaken. So that's uh, close to 700 grains. And with more than uh, 95 grains of black powder, and they didn't blow up the gun. They did eventually manage to blow up the barrel, but not the action. So. Not saying actions are super tough, but if you know anything about cartridges, this cartridge is supposed to expand out against the barrel, holding the cartridge in place. Where it will damage the action is if you get a separation of the case and all the pressure is just on the very back, just pushing back. So, this is the most powerful lever action cartridge that's currently made. This is a 5110. 
It's capable of producing right at 6,000 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. And it's capable of taking anything on Earth, I would imagine. But it's not fun at those pressures, so, or, or um, upper limits. It's not that fun. So, but at what it is fun at, this 300 grain bullet at about, uh, say, 2,200 plus feet a second, Oh, it's an awesome deer killer, a great gun, but not 6,000 foot pounds is not medium size, it's not medium bore, it's not medium caliber. That is a big bore. That is a powerful caliber. So we're going to bust a couple more myths as we go. The 336 Marlin, we all know that as one of the most... Um, popular deer rifles, at least in these parts. Everybody has a 336 Marlin, and a lot of people have killed their first deer, second deer, hundreds of deer with this particular uh, style lever action. And it's a very fun lever action, and it is a medium bore or medium, you know, power cartridge. It comes in 30-30, you know, uh, one time it come in, uh, 356 Winchester, although I know there's probably not any that you're going to find out there in that caliber. And then later, Winchester bought, or Marlin bought it out in some uh, more powerful cartridges like the three, um, what was it, the 300 Marlin, or what was it, the 308 Marlin. But anyhow, you know, fairly powerful, potent cartridges getting up there with the 308 Winchester. So, you know, they, they come in fairly decent cartridges and they're, you know, the, the thing about a lever action is they're very fun to shoot. They're very good in close brush, not so much with this big scope. But this gun comes just like this, and I got it for my daughter, and she wanted to keep it just like this. It suits me fine. She loves to hunt with it, so. That is that because they're rear locking, they're not as accurate as other guns that are front locking. Well, this is is rear locking, but it's not locking all the way at the at the back. It's locking right here, which if you look at it, right here is where it actually locks. So you know, you still got probably about a quarter of the way back here. So it's it's not all the way at the back. Don't know that that's a big deal because some of the most accurate bolt actions are rear locking also. Like there's a Steyr and then there's a Remington. Can't remember the model, but I'll put it in here in just a minute. The Remington 788 and the Steyr SS69 are both rear locking lugs, if I said that right. But anyhow, both of those are rear locking lugs, and they're known to be super accurate guns. But all lever actions don't have rear locking lugs. All of them don't lock at the breech. A lot of them do. But what about this one? This one here, I don't know which way you can see it better. Let's see if you can see in there. Anyhow, this right here. This right here is the locking locking bolt. That's where it locks into the barrel itself. And we'll pull this off here and show you exactly what I mean. You should be able to see in there. It's got slots for this bolt. Let's see if I can get the light to shine on it so you can actually see it. See that bolt? That bolt locks into this barrel. At, and it doesn't even lock it. There's nothing in the frame that locks. It only locks into the barrel. And the barrel has a little sleeve on the back that is actually what it locks into. And this just slides into here. It's nothing fantastic to hold it in there because guess what? It doesn't need anything because the it's just locking into the barrel. And this right here is 65,000 plus PSI gun. So that's about as hot as any guns get. And this lever action handles it. Now you gotta remember 
that it didn't go from lever actions, like a lot of people think, it didn't go from lever actions to bolt actions. Bolt actions were first, and then we advanced into lever actions. And then just as that lever actions advanced, bolt actions advanced. And just like this right here is the old style, there are some old style bolt actions, but not so many because bolt actions apparently aren't as fun to shoot. So people just keep advancing and forgetting about the past. How many companies make reproduction bolt actions like even even the old uh, pinfire bolt actions that was maybe, you know, 60 years before the first uh, lever actions come out. You know, back in the muzzle loading uh, paper cartridge days. And, you know, back in that time, they did come out with some pinfire bolt actions. But how many of them do you see people making reproductions of? They make reproductions of lever actions. Huh, I wonder why. Because they're really fun to shoot. I don't know, something about that lever just really, really makes it fun to shoot. And that's why I like lever actions. And I don't like myths about lever actions. There have been a lot of advances in the lever action throughout the years. A lot of them, well, you got Bullard for one, they made some lever actions that they actually said that you could full length resize cartridges by levering the cartridge inside the gun because it had such a powerful mechanism for levering that you could resize the cartridge with your chamber. Now, there's not too many bolt actions you do that with, not any automatics that I know of, or semi-automatics, uh, but they don't really make those anymore, and there's not any really reproductions of those, so I'm not sure what the deal with that was. Seemed like a pretty good gun, though. I wish they'd come out with them. I'd like to try one. But, you know, as the advance went on, you have the Model 88 Winchester, which was a front-locking uh, lever action. And then you had, uh, what was that? The Fenwolf. The Seiko Fenwolf, that's it. The Seiko Fenwolf, it was a kind of similar to the Browning and kind of similar to the Winchester Model 88. Both of them are well sought after guns and both of them are known to be super accurate. One of the myths is, let's get that, 92 and I keep getting the 92 because it's just such a fast little handy gun One of the myths is that lever actions are slower to shoot than bolt actions I don't know if any of you have watched cowboy action shooting But there is several of them that have shot more than 10 shots in under two seconds Now I don't know about you, but that's pretty fast. I know I can get three shots a second pretty easy out of this gun probably closer to four but out of a more powerful gun like even the 4590 you know you're you're producing right at a little over 4,000 foot pounds of energy and I can easily get two shots a second out of that I'm not sure how much faster you would get out of a bolt action but I'm assuming that you have a double barrel bolt action if you're much faster so I think there we busted several of the myths. We're going to continue this episode. We're going to have another episode of Tour 2. We're going to also try to do some shooting in some of these episodes. And I'll probably roll in some footage of shooting of some of the different guns that I talked about in this video as well. Now, uh, that was a 73 that shot 10 shots in one second. One at 1 1.55 of oh, almost two seconds. So it's one second and 55 hundredths of another second. So a lot of people think that um, these are outdated. But you know what? This really comes to your shoulder fast. And I mean, you're just right there. With this peep sight, if you get it up here and, get, and you're looking down, at you're on target. It is probably the fastest gun to get to your shoulder that I've ever shot. And, of course... It's fun to shoot because it's a lever action. And I mean, you just, you can throw it right up there and you'll be on target in just a split second. I've actually had deer almost get away 
but because I was using one of these and it's so fast to get on target, I was able to get it. And uh, if you're hunting from a tree stand, that's not near as important. But if you go out there and actually stock hunt, like uh, what the word means to sneak up or stock up on the animal, lever action is the best. Y'all have a great day, you hear?